Hey, here we are with a uh, simple maze game part one. Um, in this tutorial, we're going to get our maze set up. This tutorial will work in Python 2 and Python 3. So basically what we're going to be doing is we're going to be uh, creating a simple maze. Let me show you what that's going to look like. And then I'll walk you through the code and show you how that, how that works. Now I have it kind of running slowly here so you can see kind of the process. So we basically we've got a maze. It's 25 blocks by 25 blocks. Okay. Um, in our screen is, why well, should I say our playing area at least? So our screen is 700 by 700. Our playing area is 600 by 600. So 25 blocks by 25 blocks uh, means that every block is 24 by 24. Okay, so that's an important thing to remember. Um, so our screen area is 600 by 600. Our turtles, we can call them sprites, are 24 by 24, and we've got a grid of 25 by 25. So what that means is our top left block here starts at minus 288 plus 288, because 0, 0 is in the center. So that's a really important piece of information. Um, and then our top right block would be plus 288 plus 288, so that's the center of that particular block. So that math will come in handy a little bit later. Okay, so let's take a look at the code. Um, normally, you know, in a lot of tutorials, people just type the code live. Um, I'm gonna not do that. I've already done the code, and I'm just gonna walk you through, through it step by step, and hopefully it'll make some sense to you. So here we are in Python, again, uh, Python 2 or Python 3. We're gonna be using the turtle module. Turtle module is very, very convenient. Um, uses something called turtle graphics, but we can kind of also use it as a very simple uh, foundation for making a game. And if you see some of my other tutorials, you'll, you'll see that in action. Um, the first thing we need to do is create a window. And I just called it WN. It could have been WIN, it could have been W, it doesn't matter. This is just a variable name. And then we're using the turtle module and the screen method. So <clears throat> that gives us our screen. We change the, the screen's background color to black. So there's, there's a bunch of colors you can use. We change the title, so that's what appears at the top and title bar, to a maze game. And we set up the uh, screen. We want it 700 by 700 pixels. Okay. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be drawing, as you saw earlier, those blocks on the screen. Okay. So for now, what those blocks are going to be, there's going to be white squares. So what we need is we need a little, I called it a pen, could have called it anything. And we're going to use something called a class. Okay, so a class defines an object. So in this case, our object called pen, it's ca object names are capitalized by convention, is a child of the turtle modules turtle class. So what that means is our pen is a turtle. So everything that a turtle can do, our pen can do. So turtles can go forward, so I can do you know, pen.forward, I can do pen.left, etc., etc. Now keep in mind, a class is not an object. A class defines an object. I'll get to that in a little bit. Uh, whenever you create a class, you have to use this special function called initialize. It's I-N-I-T. I've got two underscores before and two underscores after. And self. Self's a little complicated, uh, but basically it refers to the object that we're, we're calling the, uh, the method on. And I'll show you that in a little bit. So because uh, pen is a child of the turtle class, we also have to initialize that class as well. So it's the same thing that's here, same thing here, init, initialize, and self. There's other ways to do this, but this is the way we've, we've chose. Um, so what I want to do is I want to set it up. So every instance of this I create, it's going to be a square, it's going to be white, and if you know anything about turtle graphics, turtles usually leave a little trail behind because the pen is down. Um, in this case, we want the pen to be up because we don't want to draw anything. And speed. Speed does not refer to the speed of motion, it's the animation speed. This is just something that we need for our turtle graphics to work as a game. And set the speed to zero, which means it is the fastest. Okay. So I'm going to skip down a little bit. Um, so I've created the class, but it doesn't mean a pen exists, it's just there is a pen class that I can use. So later, what I've done is I've done something called create a class instance. Okay. So notice this is lowercase. So I've actually created a pen. Okay. 
So think about this. I could say this is white pen and it's a pen class. I can make a red pen and use the pen class. I'd have to change the color, of course. I could say blue pen, etc., etc. But in this case, I'm using pen. So this pen is a white square. The pen is up and the animation speed is zero. Okay. All turtles start their life uh, in the center of the screen at zero, zero. Okay. So that's that. Now, I need to give the uh, pen uh, a place you know, to, to, to go. Um, so we need to create a level. Now, this is the way we've chosen to do it. So basically, what we're, we're looking ahead. Um, we want to make a list of levels. Okay, so we have level one, level two, level three, level four. We could have, we could have 100 levels in our game. Okay. So what I want to do is I've created a list called levels, and I've put an empty level in. Because if, you've, if you're familiar with Python, you'll know that in a list, it starts at zero. Um, and we could do that, uh, but I don't want to be confused. It gets a little confusing. So I want level one to be levels brackets one, not levels brackets zero. And it's just to make it easier for my understanding. So what I've done here is I've defined my first level. Now, if you remember earlier in the video, uh, I said that the screen was 25 blocks across, 25 blocks down. Okay, so if I run this one more time, you can see that these designs match. Of course, with a little, you know, text is a little taller than wider. Uh, squares are squares. So you can see all the way across, it is a full wall. Then you've got this block, you've got a couple empty spaces, you've got some more. So what this lets us do is it lets us create levels just by changing the text, which is, which is pretty nice. Um, so I can go ahead and copy this and make a new level out of that if I wanted to, or make my own levels. Um, notice I used X to represent a wall and a space to represent you know, you know where, where the player could walk. Now, it doesn't have to be an X, it could be anything, uh, but X looks pretty solid, so I chose that. So next stage is to append that level to the maze list. So I've got levels append level one. So level zero is this empty list, and levels one is now this. Okay, so this is kind of a bit more of an intermediate tutorial. Um, so this assumes you know quite a few things. Um, I've created a function to set up the maze, and I'll talk about that in just a second. And here I call the function, so setting up the level. So I've got the function called setup maze, okay, and that calls this. So the level, uh, in this case, is levels one. So that's because I've got levels zero, and then down here I appended level one, so that became level brackets one. And then, just real quick, this main game loop, um, if I stop the program here, it would just close automatically. This keeps the program going for a while. Okay. So, setup maze. Now this is where it gets a little complicated. Um, so the level, in this case, is going to be basically this information. It's this list. Okay, so basically we've got a list inside of a list, actually. So notice we've got row one, row two, row three. Now the rows are the Y coordinates. This is our X coordinate. So remember that. So what we have to do is for Y in range, length of level. So that tells us how many levels there are. Okay. Or sorry, it should be I should, sorry, it should be row, I suppose. Um, how many rows we have. So this is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, down to 24. And then across is going to be 0 through 24. So what this does is it starts with the first row, so row 0. Then we have a nested loop. So for x in range, the length of that level, okay. actually I should, probably should have made yeah level y. So level y, that's the row 0, row 0, row 1, etc., etc. What we have to do is get the character at each x, y coordinate. Note, here it's y, x, because that's the way our list is arranged. So this is y, so we get the y first, then we get the x. Um, yeah, it just works easier that way. Um, so we get something like this is 0, 0. 
0, 1, 0, 2, 0, 3, 0, 4, 0, 5, okay, in this coordinate system. So we have to translate that to our screen X and screen Y. Okay? So if you remember back here, we said that our first block was negative 288 plus 288. So that's 0, 0. So then it's plus 24, because each one is 24 wide. Plus 24, plus 24, plus 24. So 0, 0, negative 288, 288. Okay. This one is negative 288 plus 24, also 288. This one is 0, 1, 2, so that's 48. So 2 times 24 is 48. So that gives us a little mathematical sequence. And the formula is for x, it's minus 288 plus x times 24. So 0 times 24, 1 times 24. And the same thing for y, but y is positive. 288 minus, because we're going across and down, y times 24. So if there is an x, so that we're going through every single character, row by row, column by column, so y by y, x by x. If there's an x, we're going to move the pen to the screen x coordinate and the screen y coordinate and stamp it. What stamp does is it puts it on the screen and leaves it there. Okay, so let's take a look at that. So again, we're going down and across. So we've got one turtle and it's move, stamp, move, stamp, move, stamp, move, stamp. Okay. And maybe this will help if I do this, um, see what happens. Uh, instead of pen up, I'm going to leave the pen down and you can see how the turtle moves. Watch this. So it's moving across, so it starts in the center, it goes up, across, over here, across, down, you can see how it's moving. It's pretty cool, actually. But we don't want that for our game. And that is that for part one. Um, so again, watch that video a couple times uh, if it's unclear. It's just a little bit of math, and it lets us do a lot of cool things. So we can easily change. So if we wanted to you know, take out this, we would just put some spaces in there. It's a pretty easy way of doing it. And again, we can put this in an external file. There's all kinds of different things we could do. Uh, but hopefully this is easy to understand and explains the, the principles pretty well. Okay, stay tuned for part two.